Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Thursday, May 27, 2010. This morning we're going to wrap up our Seaside tutorial by showing how to save the work you've done to date. I'm not going to go any further with this tutorial. Pretty much I've given you everything you need to know to get started with Seaside 3.0 in Visual Works, or Object Studio 8.2 for that matter. But how do you save what you've done? Well, of course, you can always do the old save the image, but this is not really the best way to do it. I mean, saving an image is great for in-process work where you're working with code and you want to save an image to keep track of where you are and not have to rebuild from scratch, but it's not really the best way to do in-process saving. You can also go here and either right-click or go to Package and do a File Out Package, and that'll bring up a file dialog that you can fill in. And that's another way to save, but keep in mind that that doesn't keep any prereqs. You would then have to remember before you filed in that code, oh, I have to go and load Seaside first. So to solve that problem, what you can do is go to the Package menu again and do a Publish as Parcel, and that'll bring up this little dialog. And you can do this, and this would be because I have a version of this parcel out on my file system already, so I want to check Republish. That in itself tells you something. If you forget to check this box or for any reason you uncheck it, you can hose up your source pointers and have code in your system that doesn't have source attached to it, and then you get decompiled code. So saving parcels is not the best way to go as far as saving development work. It's good for publishing work that you're going to deploy, but not for saving work that you're going to work on. So where does that leave us? Well, it means that what we want to really do is go here and connect to a repository. I'm going to connect to my local repository. And then what I want to do is do a publish this way. And doing that, now it turns out I've done this before. I published this, so it's going to relink it to an existing version. If you were starting from scratch, you wouldn't get this. So it would just come up and prompt you, and you get this dialog here. Now, there's one thing I've neglected to do that should be done, and that is to show you this. I mentioned prerequisites. Well, in 7.7 and, of course, Object Studio 8.8, there's a difference here. You go to prerequisites, and you notice you have this set of options down here. You have the missing prerequisites that the system identified. You no longer have to hit the compute button you had to do in previous versions, but you have to drag things from here up to here, or, in this case, if I really wanted to set a prereq of something that isn't in this list, like the Seaside All Loader parcel, what I can do is go here and hit this plus button, and I can start doing type ahead, and it'll find it for me. So I can say, well, I really want to have it be dependent on that, or if I wanted to have it, say, dependent just on Seaside Core, I could pick this up and drag it and put it up there like that. So I can just drag things in if I've got the right ones. If I want to put something specific, I can do that too. So I can manually override this, or I can just drag the right thing out of here. And this is telling me all the things the system knows it's dependent on. Now, typically, that'll be everything you need. Sometimes, especially if you have highly dynamic Smalltalk code, it could miss some things, but that's fairly unusual. In any case, you can always override it manually if you know that it's dependent on something that's not in that list. Or, like here, I want to have it dependent on a loader package to get everything in at once. So that's really all there is for today and for the Seaside tutorial in general. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.